Alright, this is going to be a bit of a different video today. We're going to be taking a look at some mini PCs. And in this video, I want to focus specifically on the obscure. So, I want to look at mini PCs uh, in two categories. The one category is going to be what is the fastest, lowest power mini PC that runs Windows 7. That's what I want to know. Because I don't want to use Windows 10. I'm never going to use Windows 10. If I have to, I'll use Linux. So, I got two right here from AliExpress. The ones that I got, uh, I believe this one is the Intel J1800. Uh, this one is the Intel N2840. And the final one is going to be the Intel J3710. Okay. And I think the J3710 uh, quad core Intel CPU is the best mini PC CPU for Windows 7. I'm pretty sure. It's a quad core 6.5 watt CPU. Um, it goes up to like 2.6, 2.7 gigahertz. These are both du dual core. Um, this one is 10 watts, this one is 7.5 watts. So I want to go for the absolute lowest power because I want this thing to run off of a UPS. So I have an emergency backup power supply and I thought it would be nice to actually be able to use a full-fledged computer off of the battery backup power supply rather than only being able to use my desktop for like 45 minutes. I could use one of these, uh, you know, for many hours. Now this one, these, there's two in here. This is interesting. So this is not for Windows 7. This is not the highest performance either. But I really love this thing. So it's called DMNP. So you've probably heard of AMD and Intel. They're the two biggest CPU manufacturers. And they're pretty much the only CPU manufacturers now for, for, you know, standard PC CPUs. They are the only ones, AMD and Intel, until I found out about this company, DM&P. So this is another one that I found out uh, that makes x86 CPUs. And you can see these are two examples of their models. They uh, also have a sister company called iCOP, which sells industrial embedded boards. So let's open this thing up and we're going to take a look at what this is. There have been other videos on these things on YouTube, but not specifically the kinds that I've got here. So I've got this. Uh, it's a little bit dusty. Um, but I've got this thing right here. And I've got this one. So these are two more. Okay, so this is called an e box. Okay, this has a Vortex uh, DX3 CPU, Vortex 86 DX3 CPU in it. It's a dual core 1 gigahertz. It uses about 4.5 watts of power. Uh, it plugs into, as you can see right here, it's a standard USB connector right there. So it uses very little power, like you can plug it into a phone charger pretty much. Um, so it's only one gigahertz, it's dual core. It's not going to be good performance at all. Uh, it has 2D acceleration, but not 3D. So you can, what's interesting is this thing will run direct draw software. There's this old thing that Microsoft used to have before DirectX. It was called Direct Draw. This thing has it, but it doesn't have Direct 3D. It doesn't have DirectX or OpenGL or any of that. It only has Direct Draw. So you could play something like StarCraft on here, for example, or you know older games that use a 2D engine. Or you could use it for programming. You could use it for very lightweight web browsing. Like we're talking really lightweight. Um, this thing doesn't have SSE2. So you have to run a special browser called uh, Pale Moon. 
you have to run pale moon on here and it's got to be the version that doesn't have SSE too so it's a really specialty browser that you have to use um, this thing is primarily intended intended for uh, kiosks you know embedded stuff uh, some some they call them point of sale uh, that's the type of system that this is generally used in it's not intended to be used as a desktop computer at all um, but I think it's kinda cool because these vortex things are very special in that they include all of the old-fashioned peripherals and all of the new stuff so it's a combination of very old and very new at the same time and that's what makes these things interesting see they're trying to be compatible with newer and older systems because they want these things to work reliably in industrial applications in a lot of industrial applications like for example controlling a CNC machine in that type of industrial application you're you're going to need a system that is incredibly reliable and you know is always going to be working and you might want to you know be running older software on there that is compatible with whatever machine you're trying to operate so these things have DDR3 RAM but they have an ISA slot this port right here is actually an ISA slot this is not this is not some type of uh, proprietary thing it's just a different configuration but that's an ISA slot so ISA is what they used back in the DOS days on like 486's uh, I'll put a picture of an ISA right in the video right now uh, but this is a compact version of an ISA slot this thing right here is called a disk on module it's a SATA so this thing has SATA even though it's got ISA which is like from the 80s it also has SATA which is like a newer thing and so it's a, it's a disk on module that plugs right in here and then it goes horizontally so it's just like a little board that it doesn't really take up any space and this is 32 gigs um, you can get much bigger than that I think you can go up to 512 gigabyte but I got 32 just because it was cheap and I don't think I'm gonna use a lot of space on here because it's not that fast of a system uh, so I'm probably gonna load either Windows XP or DOS on this system you can see it's got Realtek HD audio right there BIOS uh, battery it's got one gig of RAM um, this thing I believe is an LCD yeah LCD connector so you can connect a panel type LCD that's you know not like a actual computer monitor but instead like a panel you plug it in there but it also has a VGA port I think this is the VGA port yeah right here that's the VGA so you get these cables you get these kind of things and basically you can plug this into the the header this is a parallel port the, these are the audio connectors so it comes with a little thing that gives you an audio jack and then you just plug that into the thing so what makes these and it's got four com ports so it's got a lot of serial interfaces you know because it's designed to be controlling industrial equipment right here these oops, these boards stack on top of each other so they go on a stack like this in like a rectangular formation so you can add add-on cards to this and they stack up so I think that's kinda interesting okay I'm back guys after some time so I've opened up I've now got three mini PCs here three Chinese from AliExpress and then that this one the vortex that we saw earlier so I've opened up one of these mini PCs uh, this is cheap from AliExpress you can see it comes with what's called a who disk <laughs> so it's yeah but it's really cheap 
Um, it seems to have good reviews, so I think it should be good. However, there's a little bit of an additional important thing that I want to introduce in this video because it's something that is not known about and it's something very important that everybody should know about. So on all modern Intel computer systems uh, starting in I think 2008 there's this thing called the Intel Management Engine. In the Intel Management Engine they have introduced uh, back doors uh, underneath the operating system so that um, theoretically uh, anybody could gain access over the in entire system. There are conspiracies that this was mandated by the NSA. So it, the Intel management engine is something that's very sinister that is running underneath the computer's operating system and it can gain access to whatever you're doing on the system. And this has nothing to do with how secure you keep your operating system, whether you update it, whether you update your browser, it has nothing to do with that because it's running underneath the system so it could access it whenever it wanted to. So this is something also that the United States government has mandated that Intel provide them with systems that have this thing disabled. But the consumers, we have to get the garbage that has this stuff enabled. So that's completely unfair, unethical, and ridiculous. So what we're going to be doing is not only, you know, demonstrating these systems, but we're going to do a little bit of a hack. So on this system, if you look in here, I believe this chip right here, the Windbond uh, 25Q64FW, uh, I think. The Intel management engine is stored inside of a special region of the BIOS chip. So there's this tool called ME Cleaner, stands for Management Engine Cleaner. This tool, you can download it online and it is a tool to hack the management engine and overwrite any of the parts of it that are you know potentially dangerous so it's going to hack this chip and overwrite it but it's kind of a challenging process so what I have over here I have this programmer now this thing is meant to program those chips so you're meant to clip this thing. I got another clip right here because people said this one was a better clip. We're gonna find out. But um, this, those little pins on there are meant to clip right onto that chip right there. So we're gonna find out if it works. I have no idea if it'll work. Um, this was a cheap programmer. It was like $14. Uh, it's kind of junky. As, as you can see it's junky but that's the best I could find that would work with this. See, this chip that we're dealing with right here is 1.8 volts and uh, this programmer is like 5 volts or something like that so you need all these adapters to just make it work right and then you need an adapter for hooking this thing up because they intend you to see it's like a little socket where you would open this up and put a chip in there but since we're dealing with surface mount, you got to plug this on it. But anyway, this is really cheap on Amazon. It was like 14 bucks on Amazon. And it came with the adapter as well for the 1.8. But you've got to make sure you get the one that comes with that. Some of them don't come with it. Pin 1 right there. The USB output's over there for reference. Okay, pin 1 right there. And I'm not plugged all the way up to the edge. Pin 1 and pin 8 and then on this thing pin 1's up here and pin 8 is over there okay okay so I just got the multimeter right here I just wanted to make sure I had the right pin I stuck it in this thing that's it bends around there 
the trace, it that's the thing for pin one. So I stuck it in there, and then I went on on this thing to find which one was pin one, and I just put a little mark on this because this thing doesn't seem to indicate. There's no way to know which is pin one, so it's hard to see, but it's right there. Um, so yeah, you might have to make sure. So this thing's gonna clip right on there. This is the right driver that says WDM CH341W64.SYS. That's the right driver. Okay, right now it's attempting to read it. I don't know what's gonna happen because when I selected that, which I think is correct, and it says chip info is that, which is not close to the right ID of the chip. So I don't know what's gonna happen, but we'll see if some BIOS stuff shows up in there. Okay, this might be it. I think maybe it worked. I'm scrolling down, there's a bunch of blank. Some stuff there. Now, I'm gonna use the Me Cleaner, but I wanna just check it out first to see what it, if I see any English or anything. When I use this program, Neo Programmer, and I hit Detect, it worked. It's got it right there. The other one, I think, worked, but I'm not sure. This one tells me that it's there, and it gives me the exact name, so I can confirm it, and I know that it's the case. Um, so this appears to work. Now I'm using a program called HXD, which I use relatively often, and I just went to Analysis, File Compare, Compare, okay, and then I've got the first one. I read this one with one program, and now I've, I'm going to put another one. This is number two. Just put two there, because I read, I've got two different bin files that I read with different programs. I read one with this CH341A free, and then I read the other one with Neo Programmer, which is right here. So I used two different programs, just in case. So now, what I'm doing is I read both these, and I'm going to compare them and make sure that there are no flaws, that it read both of them successfully. If that's the case, then it's probably ready to be hacked. So let's do it. Yes. Okay. So they're exactly the same, so there's no errors. So that means it's time to use me cleaner on it.